Hey everyone, this is your Monday's topic lesson and we're going to look a little bit further into what you did in your science lesson all about levers and pulleys but we're going to specify it towards the ancient Egyptians and their use of a thing called a shaduf. So the first thing I want you to do is go back onto um, Dojo and find this link to a BBC Bite Size and it's all about the three seasons of ancient Egypt and how the Nile um, helps them with their crops. So I want you to do that first before we go further with this video because this is going to help us understand why the Egyptians used the Shaduf. So go ahead and do that now. You can write a few notes whilst you're doing the video. There's also a game on the towards the link to make sure you have understood it and then you can come back to this video as well. The video explains about the three seasons. So there's the flooding season which is called Achnet. There's the growing season, which is called Peret, and there's the harvesting season called Shemu. So again, here is a screenshot from the um, BBC Bite Size lesson as well, just to recap. And I find it really interesting when these seasons are. So usually during our summer here in England, that is their flooding season. So in the floods, no farming can be done because the water is so high. So the water, um, the workers would have to do other jobs to make money and pass time, like caring for animals and serving the pharaoh. So they can't do any farming, so they've got no food that can be made because all of the whole of the farming land is covered in water from the Nile. So then towards our winter between October and February is their growing season. So that means the flood water from the Nile leaves behind rich soil so it's all drank up all that nutritious water so then the farmers can go to the fields and sow some seeds. So the soil is really fertile ready to grow some farming seeds for them. And then finally March to May is the harvesting season. So by March, many of the crops are ready to be harvested. So that means in about a month, they've all grown really, really well because of the nutrients that they've got from the soil, from the Nile that was left. And it's all grown, all the crops are ready to be harvested. So that means that it's got to be quick done in about 20 days, two weeks or so. They've got to get all the harvest. They've got to collect it all all the food before the Nile floods it again and then it would kill all the crops. So they need to make sure they do that quickly. So there are your seasons. So how did ancient Egyptians farm and what is this contraption on the right hand side? So to make the annual rising of the Nile make it beneficial, the Egyptians dug channels and walls to divert the flood away from the cities and towards the farming. So they dug canals, which look really similar to the canals that we have, and they dug them out, which must have been really hard work, quite deep, so that the water went all the way around where the soil was, so they could do all the harvesting. So it didn't go into the cities, it went all to the farming lands. And this was called basin irrigation, something that you looked at last week in your importance of the Nile PowerPoint as well. They also invented tools like a shaduf, which is what you can see here on the right hand side. And it's a long pole with a bucket attached to the end, which people use to raise and move water from the rivers or lakes. So basically a bucket that they could move around and then dip all the water onto the harvest crops. So they would lift it using the shaduf. And again, it's the large pole and it's got a cross beam on it so it can swing from side to side. And it's got a rope on one side and a heavy counterweight on the other. So it might be a weighted end that might have a rock or stones attached to it or even a person that's using it as the weight. And then by pulling on the rope, it lowers the bucket into the canal. And then when it's too heavy for the person to pull up because it's got all the water in it, that's when the weight on the other side of the shaduf comes into practice and then the weight counterbalances it and brings up the water. They can then swing the pole around and then empty it onto the field. So that means it's not flooding all of the field, it's just going to the places that they want to, the water to go on their harvest. So here we've got a little bit more information about the flooding. 
The flooding came from the melting snow on the Ethiopian mountains and the summer rain which caused the floods. So it's a bit like a monsoon. The water would rush down the Nile and into Egypt. So it's gone all through Africa and into Egypt where it would burst the banks because it's so heavy, it's overflowed, and it would go into the nearby flat fields, which is our black land, which is what we learnt about a couple of weeks ago. Um, and that is where all the crops were. The farmer would then build mud bricks and that would keep the water in. They would then build those canals, which is the irrigation part, to make sure that the water would flow where they wanted it to go, near their crops. And for the water moving, they would use that shaduf or shaduf, which is the different way of pronouncing it. And it would counterpart and it would put that bucket of water in. But you definitely have to be careful you don't catch a crocodile in that bucket. Because since ancient Egyptian times, crocodiles have lived in the water, measuring up to four metres long and definitely killing a lot of ancient Egyptians. You have to be very careful. So here are some little facts about the contraption called the Shaduf. It's hand operated because obviously there was no electricity or no machinery, so it's all operated by humans. And it was invented by the ancient Egyptians and it is still even used today in Egypt and India. So other countries that need to get water from rivers and from lakes, they use this contraption as well. So it was really technology beyond its time. It's really efficient, it's really easy to use and it's estimated that it can easily and with little, little effort, move more than 2,500 litres a day. So that's so much water, and it would definitely benefit rather than going down and getting your bucket and filling your bucket and putting it somewhere else. It's just too much time. So this is definitely a more efficient way to use a, a, a type of engineering. It's consisted of the long wooden pole in the middle, and then it had the bucket attached to it by rope and then on the other side it would have the counterweight so maybe a rock or something really heavy so here's a few different images of what you can see on the left they're taking it from the well and you can see the bit in the middle which is the fulcrum or the pivotal point and then we've got the load which is where you get the water and then the effort is the side so this is similar to what you did in your science the other day with the fulcrum load and effort the fulcrum is the pivotal point, so you can move it from side to side. The load is the water, because that's what I'm loading onto my device. And the effort is where the counterweight is, so you can see all the rocks at the side. So, a few more facts for you. Some hieroglyphs in ancient Egyptian tombs showed them using the shaduf. And then from the pictures of the hieroglyphs, archaeologists and historians have learned a lot about ancient Egyptians daily life so why they used it and how they used it so that's really really cool they built the reservoirs made from bricks and mud during the floods and connected it to the canals so that would mean that they could use the shaduf to refill the reservoirs as well um, the river Nile flooded every June, which is what we spoke about in those first couple of slides. And as well as moving the water with the Shidus, the Egyptians even went fishing. So they could amend their tools. So instead of putting a bucket at the end of it, they might have put a hook at the end of it. So then that would then be able to pull the fish out from the water, especially if it was a heavy one. The Shidduf was used to lift water from one place to another to irrigate crops, so to make sure they had lots of water to grow them successfully. Despite the arid desert, so the hot, dusty, um, no water desert, the ancient Egyptians grew lots of crops, including wheat and barley, so they could make bread and they could make things like um, maybe um, pasta, so they could have lots of rich carbohydrate foods to keep them going. The typical shaduf was able to hold 20 litres of water and this was a contained part of the device usually made from animal skins or clay. So inside the bucket or the bucket was made from clay or animal skins to make sure it was um, solid enough to keep the water in it and not leak. Nobody knows how the ancient Egyptians built huge pyramids, but they have maybe an inkling or maybe a thought that there was just a massive version of a shaduf that was used to lift stones weighing up to 15 tons. So maybe the counterweight weighed a lot more than 15 tons and it was able to lift it onto the pyramids because it's still a real question as to how the ancient Egyptians built the pyramids so high and so quick. 
And there was another project that began in 2004, which was to study irrigation and the Shadoff techniques. And it's attempting to focus on the attention of different ways of collecting water. So even now, we're looking back at how the ancient Egyptians used their techniques to get more information about the way that they lived. So your task today, I want you to design me a poster all about the ancient Egyptian Shadoff. It must contain the following. So I want you to get a piece of paper or you can use an A4 piece in your book. It doesn't matter if it's got lines on it because that might help you with your extra information. I want you to give me a labelled image of someone using a Shadoff. So you can, might go back to the slides with all the images on that you can use. And I want you to label with the load, the effort and the fulcrum and then the person and then the, um, the bucket of water. I want you to give me a detailed explanation about how it works and this is where we relate our knowledge back to our science lesson that we did the other day. I want you to tell me why the Egyptians used the Shadoffs. I want you to think about some interesting facts that you've learnt throughout this video. You, again, you can go back to each of the slides and you can copy them or you can write them in your own words, which would be appreciated. You can tell me about the three seasons that it helped of Egypt and why it was used in which season. And then finally, the name and features of the month of the three seasons. So like you did on the BBC Bite Size task, tell me about the three seasons and why the Shadoff was used. You can tell me the months of the three seasons and the Egyptian names for it and how the Shadoff was used throughout those seasons. So that is your task for today and I can't wait to see your posters all about the ancient Egyptian techniques.